represent the differences between the divine love path and lots of other paths is so that you can get a bit of a flavour inside of yourself about how it encompasses all of your life. You can't just do little bits and pieces of things when it comes to God. God expects, and you could say God has designed her universe in such a way that if you want to come to her, there is only one way to do it. And this one way in, in, encompasses all areas of your life. There's not a single area of your life that will not be touched by progression uh, using the, on the divine love path. And so what I'd like to do is describe some of the different way, areas of that of your life that are going to be affected and describe some of the different areas that we can see a lot of the other paths don't incorporate. And the reason why is because on the earth today, we have a lot of spiritual paths, literally millions really, of spiritual paths, and many of them incorporate aspects of different parts of what God actually designed the universe to be. So all of them have bits and pieces of truth, if you like. And the difference between the divine love path and all of these other paths is the divine love path of progression has the absolute truth. And the absolute truth, of course, is going to incorporate all of these little bits of truth. So you'll notice, oh, that's very similar to the Buddhist path there, and that's very similar to the Hindu way of doing things, and that's very similar to the Muslim way of doing things, that's very similar to the Christian way of doing things, that's very similar to the New Age things that we've learned. But all... All of it is incorporated, but not not all of the factors of those different paths are incorporated. Only the truths of those paths are incorporated, if that makes sense. So what you finish up getting is this whole life experience that is incorporated and got, and your connection with God will change your entire life completely. It actually not only changes your life, but it actually physically changes your 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 soul and your spirit body, and your material body. So, for example, on all the natural love paths, they often talk about the seven chakras, for example, right? And in terms of keeping all of these chakras open and progressing that way. On the divine love path, there is actually more chakras that your body starts to develop. And after a while, once you become at one with God, I think there's 13 chakras once you become at one with God, not seven anymore. And so your, even your spirit body changes. And so, um, and while I haven't remembered everything about how it all changes and everything because of my own emotional suppression about my own fears that I'm working my way through now, the reality is that uh, the, phys the physical body changes. What, what will happen on the divine love path is your physical body will start releasing its ailments. Right? And you'll get to the point where you have no ailments, no sickness, no disease at all. But when you're going through different emotions, those ailments will flare up until you've released them. And so you get this cycle of things going on even with your body, your physical body, where your physical body makes adjustments and changes. So my body has made huge changes um, over the five or six years that I've been really focused on doing everything again. And the body has just changed immensely. You also have, you will also find yourself that in the first entry I said the eyes are the window into the soul. And you, when you look in a mirror, any of you done iridology? Yeah? Got a few? So when you look into a mirror, you'll notice these blemishes and specks in your eyes all the way around the iris um, and in the coloured section. And you will notice even that clears up. You'll notice all of that, which is a reflection of what's clearing up in your body. So what happens is even your eyes become very, very clear and the more clear they become, the more you know you're releasing emotional injuries as well. And eventually they become so clear that if you take a photo of it, it's just all one colour without blemishes at all. And when you become at one with God, there is no blemishes at, at all in the iris of your eye, for example. You know how most of you have done some reflexology at some point? They had a you know, foot, foot, foot reflexology. The same applies there. You know that there's these pressure points, right, that you can press and it can release or connect to different parts of your body and release different emotions if you allow that to occur. Well, on the divine love path, you'll get to the point where there's no sensitive places on your feet at all. Right? Where there's no, where you can press any pressure point and nothing, nothing hurts. How many of you have done their deep tissue, deep tissue massage, for example? Yeah, quite a few. 
With deep tissue massages, the idea is to get right, right deep into, and it can be quite painful when you're getting it done, can't it? And, and if you allow your emotions to rise, you'll be crying or whatever. I remember the first time I came out, there was this lady in Dallas who did uh, my first three and a half hour session she gave me of deep tissue massage and I just screamed and cried the entire session. And when I came, came out, my whole body was black and blue with bruises. Uh, my whole body. And uh, it took a week before those bruises disappeared. Now, if she had done the same... Uh, in the last session I did with her, she did the same things and... And the first half of the session was really incredible because I was still in this terrible pain with different parts of my body. And then all of a sudden I went through this barrier of fear. And then I came out and what she, she was still doing the deep tissue stuff and it felt pleasurable. And I couldn't believe it all of a sudden, just by something clicking inside of me about fear. And all of a sudden now my body responded differently to what she was doing. And it was just a state that I was temporarily in at that point but it helped me also understand how you can be in that state and there's memories that I have of being in that state obviously from the first century and it helped me just connect with those memories of being in that state in a permanent way where there is no fear in your body. Now on the Divine Love Path it incorporates that as well. So, so if you can think of almost every single thing you've done, spiritual practice, physical body repair, health and all these other things of, uh, uh, that affect your life, and then if you look at all the spiritual side and the moral side as well and all the things you may have done there, what happens in the end is the Divine Love Path incorporates all of these in certain, all of these things in certain ways as you would expect if it was connected to God when you think about it. Because obviously if we're connected to God then we're going to learn the truth about our soul, our spirit body and our material body. And not just guessing about it, we will come to know the truth about it, how it actually works in every single way. And in the first century I said the words, if you follow, if you, if you long for divine love, if you long for God's love, if you long for a connection with God, all these other things that you're seeking will be added to you. And what I meant was, your health will be added to you. Your eyesight will repair itself and be added to you. And all these other things will be added to you. So, so eventually what will happen is these things will disappear as you progress on the path. Right? And then all of the ailments of the body will disappear. If you have any body distortions because of emotions due to your growing up, they will disappear. So some of you might grow a few inches taller, for example, right? because of the different things that occur in the body as a result. And because in the end, all of these things are all affected by the emotions that the soul is storing. So